Thank you, by the way. Thank you all for joining me here. Thanks to NUFTI members for inviting me. And thanks to the Crown Prince for paving the way for this valuable session. There has been some great discussions and valuable papers on different topics, on economy, on budget, on healthcare. But the, the reality is that, unfortunately, I or we, actually, we all have a very bad news for you all. Without water, none of those matters. We have seen from Lake Urmia to Bactagon Lake, from Lake Hamun to the Karun River, from Gorgon Bay to Gulf Khuni Wetland. We have seen lakes dried up, wetlands dried up, rivers dried up, and our groundwater resources have been aggressively withdrawn from its last droplets. Due to this, during the last almost five or six years, we have seen several wide, let's say, countrywide protests or social unrest across the country against the mismanagement, or I would say, plunder of other resources by the system. And surprisingly, by many other people in abroad, but not surprisingly by the people inside of Iran, that all of those people after just one day or a few days of protests, they mentioned directly the supreme leader or the system directly. They know that the problems are not just technically, or there is no technical solutions for these problems. They know that beyond the mismanagement, there is a policy making problem. Beyond the mismanagement, there is an institutional problem. And beyond the mismanagement, absolutely, there's problems with our constitution in Iran. Let me give you an example. Some people might say that the main problem that right now we have for our water resources is just self-sufficiency. That's partially true. Self-sufficiency for food products, self-sufficiency for agricultural products. But that's not the whole story. It's not just about the managers. It's not just about the consultants. Let me give you an, first an example or experience from my own side. I did my master in Iran, and I worked as a consultant, but I was a consultant in Iran. I came to the US, did my PhD, and have worked as a consultant in several states. I can tell you this with high certainty. We do not have an expertise problem. We do not have a human resources problem. We have policy-making problem. We have so many good experts inside and outside of Iran. But their problem, first of all, is with our constitution. In Article 3 and 43 of the Islamic Republic Constitution, you might sound, it's, it's kind of, it might blow your mind. But uh, in Article 3 and 43 of the Constitution, it's explicitly mentions that we have to be self-sufficient in agricultural and food products. The founder of the regime, Ruhollah Khomeini, mentioned several times that we need to be self-sufficient in those products. There was an act ratified by the Congress in Iran, or the Majlis Shura Islam in Iran, in 1982, which surprisingly mentioned that many of the floodplains that were prohibited for groundwater withdrawal before the revolution. So now they can, by some conditions, they can be used for groundwater extraction. And what was the result? Right now that I am talking with you all, Iran is at least among the top 10 countries in the world in terms of the water stress. And I want to right now give you I've just found a statistic that once again can blow your mind. The amount of or the percentage of water extraction from our water resources, renewable water resources, including streams, creeks, upper levels of groundwater, is among at least 
the top five. Can you, some of you, can you, for example, give an example? 10%, 20%, 40%, 50%, 60%? You can raise your hand just to tell me. Yes, please. Go up. It's 100%. We are using 100% of, of our annual, annual renewable water resources. And what happened after that? Right now, among the several indexes, indexes of uh, lab, uh, land subsidence in Iran, for example, extent of lab size on this land subsidence or uh, maximum rate of Laps, uh, land subsidence, or let's say mean rate of laps, uh, land subsidence in Iran. Iran right now is among the top five countries in the world. But, but if we do a weighted average of those indices, you know what we come for? Iran is sinking rapidly that, than any countries in the world. Right now, Iran ranks first in terms of land subsidence in the world first. So that's, that's not just a regulatory. That's a territorial integrity threat for our motherland. Besides that, we all know that Iran is a water scarce country. Our precipitation rate is one third of the average flow. Our evaporation rate it's three times of the average world. And our soil erosion is five to eight times of the average world. But this was not like this always. Our ancestors, during the last 2,500 years, knew this situation. So they emphasized on adaptation to this situation. They used the grid. Our legendary king, more than 2,500 years ago, said that may our land be protected from three problems, enemies, lies, and drought. They didn't overlook the water problem. We cannot overlook the water problem. If we love our motherland, and we, if we care about the future of our motherland, we have to care more about our water resources, about the groundwater situations, and more importantly, know that as long as this regime is in governance, based on the several reasons that after this, my, my talk that we are gonna discuss in the panel, based on several reasons, the situation would be intensified. It does not mean that once the regime collapse, every problem would be solved. No, that's not the situation. But at least we know that an actionable plan, a hope for actionable plan would be retrieved for the people of Iran, for the future of Iran, and for the water resources of Iran. Thank you.